Peggy Snow and I'm the Youth Service Coordinator here at John Harden High School and tonight we are kicking off our spring season for the Bulldog Story Hour, um, Storybook Hour. So it starts at 6 and it goes for about an hour and we have our students, our readers who are leaders, uh, come and read stories to some of our elementary bulldogs. So Heartland is invited, and New Highland Elementary is invited, and Woodland Elementary students are invited to come over to John Harden and listen to stories for about an hour. And then, luckily, we have some snacks, and we have some juice boxes, and everyone gets to go home with a color sheet, some crayons, and a book. So it's a great night, a great literacy program for our students and families to come together. We will have one tonight, but we will also have one in May, which is another great opportunity for, for families to come out and read with their children. Hi, my name is Allison Losevitz. I have three kids, all at Heartland Elementary. We came here because we love Bulldog Story Hour. We've been going, um, I think, about three years ever since they started back up with after COVID. We've been going, and my kids really look forward to it. I worried, you know, as they got older, especially my fifth grader, um, that she wouldn't be interested. But even she loves coming and hearing the stories. I feel this is super beneficial because sometimes after a long day, a long week at school that my kids just aren't really interested anymore. Um, they don't want to sit down for a book and so they have this opportunity to come here and hear from kids that are older to them, kids that would be like a mentor or a role model and it's just a different dynamic that they can get more learning with reading and be able to interact with um, the high quality kids that they have here. Um, I absolutely love this event. It's fantastic. It's pretty low key. Um, you just come in and enjoy yourself. The kids get to take home a book, get to take home a snack, and they love doing that every single time. So if you get an opportunity, come on out and join us. She jumped over hurdles, bounded through the tunnels, climbed a ladder, and zipped down the slide. Woof, she called as she crossed the finish line. 15 seconds, Cody said. That's your best time ever. You're going to ace the agility test tomorrow. Cody rubbed Champ's belly while she rested. His hand slid over a strange bump beneath, beneath her soft fur. What's this, Champ? I never noticed it before. Champ thumped her tail against the grass. Maybe we should see your doctor, Cody said. When they walked into the vet's office, Champ whined and put her tail between her legs. 
I know you don't like coming here, Cody said, but we'll be done soon. When the tests were finished, the doctor had some bad news. Oh, Champ, Champ has cancer, she explained. Like people, a dog's body is made of tiny blobs called cells. Sometimes these cells grow the wrong way and make a body sick. Cody looked into Champ's eyes. She doesn't seem sick. That's the strange thing about cancer, the doctor said. Patients can seem fine even though they're sick inside. Cody's throat felt tight. Will she be all right? He asked. We have some strong medicine to fight cancer, the vet answered, but she will have to come here every week and she won't like it. Whoa, big one. Okay, at home, Cody set out Champ's food and a fresh bowl of water. Then he had a terrible thought. What if this was his fault? Maybe he should have never fed Champ the peanut butter or the jelly crust. Maybe he shouldn't have given her the old sneaker to chew on. Cody lay down on the floor and whispered, I'm sorry if I did this to you. Champ licked the tears off Cody's face. She licked his forehead, his cheeks, and his nose. Cody giggled. Oh, Champ, you smell like dog food. Champ wagged her tail. She obviously didn't blame Cody. Maybe he didn't make her sick, Cody thought, but he could help her get better. When you go in for your medicine, I'm going with you. School was like an alien planet the next day. Cody couldn't think about anything but Champ. Hey, Cody, Marissa said, I'm playing basketball with Kurt after school. Do you want to come? I can't, answered Cody. I'm taking my dog to the vet for her treatment. She's sick. Cody walked Champ into the chemotherapy room. A nurse set up a clear blue tube and IV. The tube pumped medicine into Champ's body through an IV port. I know this isn't any fun, Cody said. Just remember, we're trying to help you. Champ, he read Champ a scratch and sniff book to take her mind off the IV. Mmm, smell this one. It's peanut butter, your favorite. Champ sniffed the book and sneezed. Champ had to take pills every day and they tasted awful. Luckily, Cody had an idea. Here, Champ, how would you like a spoonful of yummy peanut butter? One day, Kurt and Marissa came to see Cody after school. I heard your dog is sick, Kurt said. She has cancer, Cody answered. She is kind of sad today. She doesn't feel like eating. You should cheer her up, Marissa suggested. What does she like, like to do? Cody rubbed Champ's belly. She loves the agility course at Happy Tails Park, but her medicine is making her tired. I don't know if she can run. My dog has a bad hip, Kurt said. I still take her though, for walks though. I just go more slowly. Cody's eyes lit up. Champ, should we try going to the park? Woof! Champ got up and off the couch. Kurt and Marissa cheered as Champ came down the starting platform. Champ was not as grace, her graceful self. She ran around the hurdles inst instead of jumping over them. She skidded down the slide at an odd angle, but she finished the course. You did it, Cody cheered. Do you want to do another run? Champ laid down and put her head on her paws. Okay, you rest today. We can come back tomorrow. Another few weeks, Champ got a break from her chemotherapy. The doctor did some more tests. The medicine is helping, she said. 
but Champ will have a but Champ will have a good weeks and bad weeks. The next week was a good one. Each day Champ ran a little faster. She jumped onto the starting platform by herself. She raced through the tunnels and leaped a hurdle. Yes, Cody shouted. With a little patience, we'll be ready for the, ag the agility show. On Saturday, it was showtime. Cody jogged alongside Champ as she dashed through the course. He had to run fast to keep up, and he tripped. Ow! Cody fell to the ground and clutched his ankle. The people watched and gasped. Champ leaped off the ladder and ran straight for Cody. She stood over him, licking his face. I can't get up, he stammered. Champ leaned her body against Cody's side. Cody slowly on one foot, stood on one foot slowly and hopped, using Champ as a crutch. The crowd cheered as Champ and Cody, Ch Champ led Cody off the course. That night, Cody stared at his cast. I'm sorry, champ, he said. I ruined your chance to be a real champion. Champ jumped onto the bed and snuggled against Cody. I guess it's your turn to take care of me, just like I took care of you. Woof, champ agreed. Maybe you didn't win the title of fastest dog, but you are the bravest. And that is that. So that was kind of a different book, wasn't it? Because we learned a little bit about some. sometimes our dogs are sick and sometimes we're sick. Okay. Miss Hannah, you ready? You want to come pick one? I do not like to read. Not books, not magazines, not even the menu on the ice cream truck. And I especially do not like to read out loud. Keep trying, Madeline Finn, my teacher says, but sometimes I can't figure out the words. Sometimes the sentences get stuck in my mouth like peanut butter. Sometimes people giggle when I make a mistake. And I never get a star sticker from my teacher, not even a smiley face. Instead, I get a heart that says, keep trying. But I, I get a lot of keep trying stickers, but I want the star. Stars are for good readers. Stars are for understanding words and for saying them out loud. But now I know what else they're for. Stars are for making wishes, so I make a wish on my very own star. I guess wishes take a while because I don't get my star on Monday or Tuesday. Keep trying, my teacher tells me on Wednesday. On Thursday, I say the frog's name wrong. It's Samuel. I try not to get away with, I try to get away with Sam, but that doesn't work. Friday is no better. On Saturday, Mom takes me to the library. Hello, Madeline Finn, Miss Dimple says. She's our librarian. I don't like to read, I remind her in case she forgot. Oh, I remember, she says, but today we have something special, something you might enjoy. Madeline Finn, would you like to read to a dog? Miss Dimple leads me over to a big white dog. This is Bonnie. Why don't you pick out a book to read to her? She's a great listener. Bonnie is beautiful like a big snowy polar bear. Would you like to try, Mom asks? Yes, please, I say, but not very loud. At first, I'm nervous. I get the letters mixed up. The words don't sound right. But then I look at Bonnie and she looks right into my eyes. She doesn't giggle. I feel better. I try again. Halfway through, I get stuck on another word. Bonnie doesn't mind. She still puts her big paws in my lap and lets me pet her until I figure it out. After that, Bonnie and I read every together every Saturday. It's fun to read when you're not afraid of making mistakes. Bonnie teaches me that it's okay to go slow and keep to keep trying just like the sticker says. I still don't have a star, but I can be patient like Bonnie.
Soon it's almost time to read in class again, but when I go to the library, Bonnie's not there. Neither is Miss Dimple. Would you like to wait for another dog, the librarian says. No, thank you, I say as politely as I can. Don't worry, Mom tells me later. Bonnie was just busy today. But what about school, I ask. You'll do fine, she says. Just pretend you're reading to Bonnie. On Monday morning, I am very nervous. Madeline Finn, would you like to read the next? The teacher asks, yes, please, I say, but still not very loud. The first sentence goes pretty well. Then I mess up on a word, and then another, I hear someone giggle. But then I think about Bonnie. I take a deep breath and pretend she's right next to me. Next thing I know, I'm at the bottom of the page. I look at my teacher, and she has a big smile on her face. I did it. I got my star. On Saturday, we go to the library again. Miss Dimple is back. I got my star, I tell her. I want to give it to Bonnie. Well done, Madeline Finn, she says. I think Bonnie might have a surprise for you, too. Madeline Finn, would you like to read to Bonnie and her puppies? Yes, please, I say, nice and loud. The end. First, oh, you both going there. Okay, great. All right, Emma. Warm weather. <coughs> Drip, drop, skip, and hop. Splish, splash, sidewalk, dash. Worm, worm, wiggle, squirm. Worm weather. Mom would want to have one. 